All right, the next thing we're going to solve is getting the camera to follow the player. Right now, when we play our game, we can see that the camera does not move, but the player is allowed to move freely. Now, this uh, creates some odd situations where we can walk off the edge, basically, and the camera is no longer able to follow us. So we need to make it so that the camera will, in fact, follow the player around. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go down to our scripts here and we're going to create a new script. So we're going to right click and say create a C sharp script. And this I'm going to call camera move. So let's double click onto that. All right. Now this is going to be a pretty simple script. All we're going to do is uh, figure out where the player's position is and we're going to make it so that the camera's position um, just copies the player's position. So we're going to feed in the player object. We're going to say public game object player. And then under update, we're going to say transform dot position. Now this is going to refer to the camera's position because that's where we're going to be placing this script. So our camera's transform.position is going to be equal to a new vector3. Now vector3 has x, y, and z. So for x, we're just going to feed in player.transform.position.x. And then for y and z, we're just going to feed in the, the, cam the camera's already determined y and z position. So we're going to say transform.position.y and transform.position.z here. There we go. All right, so now this should, every frame, it should update the camera's position to be wherever the player's x position is and then wherever the camera's y and z position is. So let's save that. File, save. Now we're going to click on main camera here and we're going to make sure to apply that script. So I'm going to drag camera move here. Now under camera move we have that player public game object, right? So it doesn't know what to follow at this point. We need to tell it which game object is the player and which one do we want to follow. So we're going to drag player into our spot for the player game object. So now when we hit play this camera should follow the player, and it does. You can see we can get to the edges of our beach, and we can actually walk off the edge and fall down. Now, the camera's only following the X position, so it didn't drop off with our player down the Y position there, but you can see that it is in fact following us left and right. We don't really need it to follow us in the Y position in this case. We're gonna make sure that there's obstacles so that you cannot fall off the end of the level, end of the earth there. So that shouldn't be a situation that we have to be concerned with. But this will allow the camera to follow the player along. So we can continue to make this level bigger and the camera will stay with you. Okay, next we're gonna lay out our level. We're gonna extend this a little bit and we're gonna create a left and right bound so that the player cannot fall off the edge. So as you saw, the camera is now following the player. So we can just extend this by um, duplicating this a couple times. So let's take this beach, and I'm just going to say duplicate. And we're going to move that over in the position x direction. OK, we can overlap it a little bit there. And let's just duplicate it a couple more times. So duplicate, and this one we're going to move over again. Just an overlap. And then uh, maybe one more time. We don't have to make a huge level here, but we'll duplicate it one, once more. And then we'll move that over there. Okay. So we can actually group these together by making the other beaches a child of the original beach. So we're going to grab those three, and we're going to drag it onto the first beach. And you see how that kind of groups it into a parent-child relationship? So if I move this first beach that will actually move all others with it. So they are grouped together. 
So we do have some overlap in our colliders, but because they're exactly the same height, it shouldn't make a difference. Let's just test that out. So I'm gonna click on my player. I'm actually gonna increase the speed just a little bit. So if I go down here to my player controller, instead of five, let's do 10. Let's hit play. Okay, and we're moving right along. Doesn't seem to be any catches on those colliders. And we can go off the edge. There we go. All right, so we need to make it so that we can't fall off the edges. So I'm scrolling in and out here with my mouse, and I can also hold Alt to have a, a hand for panning, so I can click and drag to move around my level there. So I'm going to create some barriers. So we're going to go to the plus here, and we're going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this game object um, left barrier. I'm going to add a component to it that's going to be a physics 2D box collider 2D. Here on Edit Collider, I'm just going to make this larger so we can't get out of it. And I'm going to move this over here. There we go. So this is right on the end. So let's test that out. I'm going to hit Play. And I'm going to try to go off the edge here. And I'm not able to. I'm bumping into that collider and it's not letting me. All right. So that's the end of my level. Um, now you can you don't have to use an invisible wall. You can get creative and put something in there. You can put a little sand pail or an umbrella or something beach-like that would act as a blocker. So I'm gonna change this to left barrier, okay? Now I'm gonna duplicate this and this one's gonna be called right barrier. All right, and that one is going to get moved way over. So let's click on right barrier, and now I'm going to take the X position and drag it all the way over here. All right, so let's make sure that's working as well. So it's a duplicate. There's no reason it shouldn't, but just for testing purposes, we're going to go to try to run into the right barrier. and we are stopped at the right barrier. Okay, so now we have our sort of world space laid out. And we can see our left barrier is at negative 12, almost 13 in the X, and our right barrier is at almost 90 in the Y. So we have a pretty wide level there, ranging from negative 12 to 90. And that's gonna be important later for measuring out where we're spawning things. So I'm gonna go ahead and save everything, make sure you do as well. Okay, next I'm gonna create a little home base for our crab player here. So I already created these assets. You can create your own or you know, um, you can find some off the internet, whatever works. So I'm gonna to go to my sprites here and I have a castle front and castle back. You can see a little front of a sand castle and this little doorway of a sand castle. And the reason I split it into two pieces is to give the illusion of going inside of it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna click plus here and we're gonna say, a 2D object sprite, okay? And this sprite is going to have the castle front, okay? Now, uh, let's increase the size of this a bit. Uh, three, 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 let's do maybe five, five, five. Uh, that's a little too big. Let's go four, 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 maybe. Mm, it's a little too big. Let's go back to three, three, three. All right, now let's move this around a little bit. So where is our collider on the beach? It's right down there. So let's move our castle. This is the new sprite. We're gonna call it castle front. Okay, and let's move it down just a little bit. All right. Let's actually move it over towards our barrier. Or actually, we'll leave it there and we'll just move the barrier over once we've done placing this. Okay, and now we're going to create a new sprite again. This is going to be a 2D object sprite. And this one is going to be the castle back. Yep. And we want the scale again to match. So we're going to do 3, 3, 3. And we're going to move it over. And down. 
should line up fairly well here. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the idea. All right. So again, we want to make sure our sorting layer is correct for this one. So let's see, the castle back here should be on zero, right? And the castle front, because we want it to be in front of the crab, so the crab is on sorting layer one, so the castle front should be sorting layer two. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's not showing up in our game here, and the reason for that is the Z position, okay? So if we look into 3D here, we can see that this is way far back, or, or closer than we meant, right? So let's go back to here, and in our Z position, let's just change that to zero. And castle back, let's also change that Z position to zero. And now we should be able to see this in our game. There it is, yep, so that Z position, if it's too far, the camera may be clipping it out, so you wanna check that. And we can, in fact, go inside of our castle. We are um, below the front of it in the sorting or order and in front of the back of it in the sorting order. I hope that makes sense. Let's make the castle a little bit bigger to sort of make that the feet disappear there. So under the castle, front let's make it four 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 uh, let's do 3.5 so the spacing isn't exact we can you know play with that to make everything look better in the future Okay, so now I've changed the castle back into 3.5. I'm gonna make the castle back a child of the castle front so we can move it around. And let's see here, so our beach. That probably looks all right, let's see. So let's move our barrier over a little bit too so that we can't go too much outside of that castle. Let's hit play and take a look. There we go, We're kind of in the castle there. You can kind of see the leg a little bit, but that's okay, we can fix that later. Or we can leave it as such. But there we go, now we have a little castle home base, which you can sort of have the illusion of walking into. And this is where we're gonna go collect our items and bring them back to over here. Next, I'm going to create my enemy for the game. This is a foot that's gonna to try to step on you as you collect your food. So under the sprites folder, I've already imported uh, another asset here. It's a foot. So this foot is going to be going up and down trying to stomp on you. So I'm going to create um, a new 2D object sprite up in the hierarchy panel. And I'm going to call this enemy. And the sprite is going to be the foot. You can either click here and that will show your sprites you can choose from or you can drag this in as well into this panel here. Okay, I'm going to move this up a little bit. And we need a collider on this as well. So we're going to add a component. I'm going to go to Physics 2D. We're going to use a box collider. And it doesn't really have to be the entirety of this, so we're going to click our Edit Collider button, and I'm going to just drag it down just to about where the foot is. And I'll click this to stop editing my collider. All right, now I'm going to go to my Scripts folder, and I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. And this is going to be called Enemy controller I'll double click on my script to open it so I get a new blank script here all right and we're gonna to need to declare a few variables to start 
So we need to keep track of some positions because we want this to go um, from its starting position, drop down a little bit, and then go back up. So we're going to declare some um, private vector threes. So I'm going to declare private vector three new position. This is the position that we want to go to. Our start position, this is where we'll start. And our end position. All right, so we're also going to do a public int for speed, how fast we want this thing to move. And we're going to also declare a public float wait timer. And one last variable we're going to declare is a public float drop distance. All right. Now down in our start method, we're going to say our start position is equal to our transform dot position. So this is wherever this object is spawned or starts when in game mode. Our end position is going to be equal to a new vector3 start position dot x. Now we need to measure how far we want to go, so we're going to say our start position dot y minus our drop distance and then our start position dot z. All right. Now we need to do what's called a coroutine. This is going to loop a function over and over and do something repeatedly for us. So we're going to say start coroutine. And in here, we're going to say update coroutine now we haven't written this function yet so it's going to tell us that it doesn't exist but we're going to make this function now we're going to say i enumerator update coroutine Okay, and this needs to return something. Um, we're going to start a loop for this. We're going to say while true, because we just want this to keep going. And we'll say yield return null. So right now this is not going to return anything. Actually, this will not return anything anyway, so this is just going to loop this code over and over again. So we're going to say if mathf dot approximately transform dot position dot y start position dot y. So what this is saying is approximately is measuring if these two points are approximately close or the same approximately the same. So we're going to measure the current transform of this object and see if it's close to the start position. If that is true, then we're going to set the new position variable equal to end position. And if mathf dot approximately transform dot position dot y is close to end position 
dot y. Then the new position is equal to the start position. So if we are close to the end, the start position, then the new position we want to go to is the end position. And if we're close to the end position, then the new position we want to go to is the start position. And to move this, we're going to say transform dot position equals vector three dot lerp. So lerp is linearly interpolate. So this is going to move this object between these two points over time. We're going to say move our transform dot position to new position. We're going to do that over time dot delta time times speed. All right, and make sure you save that code. All right, now back in Unity, let's click on our enemy again here, and let's drag our enemy controller onto our enemy sprite here. All right, and let's see, so our enemy is six in the Y, so let's say our drop distance is six, and our wait timer is 0.5, and let's try seven for speed. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so the wait is how long it will wait before going back up. You can see our drop distance maybe is uh, could use a little bit farther. And the speed is obviously how fast this is dropping up and down. But you can see it's going up and down as we expected. We can also test that the collider will work here. Let's try that out. Oh, and you can see it pushes the crab down. So we know our colliders are working. Let's increase that drop distance to seven. Okay, now we need a way to spawn this enemy all throughout the map. So we're gonna create a, another object and we're gonna use that as an, an enemy spawner. So I'm gonna say, create an empty. I'm just gonna call this enemy actually we're, we can use it to spawn multiple objects we can use it to spawn our food as well as our enemies so why don't we just call this object spawner all right okay and i'm going to start this thing on the ground um, or a little bit closer to the ground let's see where our floor is so it's just about here let's move that down Let's start this over at home base here. All right. And this is just an empty game object. Again, it's just going to hold this place here, and we'll use that as a reference for where we're going to spawn our objects. So we're going to create a new script here. I'm going to create a C sharp script, and we'll call this enemy spawner. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and open this script. Okay, and we're gonna declare some public variables here. I'm gonna say public game object, and this is gonna be our foot. This is our enemy game object we're gonna take in. I'm gonna say private game object enemy 
And the reason that we're making a distinction between those two is because foot is going to reference the actual game object um, that we're going to drag in the prefab. And then enemy is going to represent the one that we spawn in a loop. All right. And again, we're going to need to do a coroutine for this. So I'm going to say start coroutine. And again, I'll do update coroutine, even though we haven't written it yet. Down here, I'm going to say I enumerator update coroutine. And we're going to say, again, a, a loop while true. So this is just going to keep running while the game is running. And for now, we'll say yield return null again. OK, next we'll need a wait timer. This is because we want to destroy these objects. After they're done, we're just going to make it stomp down once like a foot, and then it'll destroy itself and be gone out of the game. So we're going to say yield return new wait for seconds. And I'm just going to try uh, a number to start, and then we can adjust it. Or we can even pull out a public variable and use that to adjust it. So I'm going to start with 1.5 seconds. So that will make the code wait for 1.5 seconds. And then why don't we uh, log out our message. So we'll say debug.log and we'll say we're now creating an enemy. All right. Now, in order to create the enemy, we need to instantiate a new object. So we're going to say enemy is equal to a game object. We're going to instantiate a game object. The game object that we're going to make or instantiate is going to be a foot. And we're going to say where this is going to get made, new vector 3. And this is where we need to remember where our coordinates were. So for our x, y, and z, we need to figure out where we want to spawn this thing. So let's look back at our Unity game for a moment. And our left barrier is at negative 10. And our right barrier is at 90. So for our x, we're going to say random dot range between, let's just to be safe, we'll say negative 7 and 85. Uh, we'll do 88. And then for our y position, um, we're not sure how far it's gonna, we're gonna wanna go yet, so for now we'll just start it with 10 and we'll adjust it. We're going to say transform dot position dot y, and we'll just add 10 to it. It'll be uh, above our spawner um, plus 10 in the in the y position. And then we'll just keep the transform z alone. And then um, for instantiating, we also have to worry about um, rotation. So we're just going to say quaternion.identity. You don't really have to worry too much about that right now. OK. Now we need to handle deleting the enemy. So we're going to say if enemy is, so the exclamation point means not. So we're going to say if enemy is not equal to null. then destroy enemy and we'll start waiting for three seconds. If this timing doesn't quite work, we can adjust it a little bit. So let's save that. And I'm going to go back to Unity. 
I'm going to click on Object Spawner, and I'm going to add my enemy spawner over here. Now it's looking for the foot game object, so I'm going to drag this enemy right into here. And let's test if this works. So I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to hit scene. And let's zoom out and see how this looks. And we can see that it is spawning feet that are stomping once and going back up. And it's randomly spawning it in between a range of, what did I say, negative 7 and 88.